This piece of equipment is called a tilt skillet. Its uses are for braising large amounts of food at once, searing many things at once, or often we use it for making a short cooked stock like vegetable stock. It has other applications as well, which I'm sure you can be inventive to discover. The tilt skillet is built with four burner jets across the bottom that heat up a large plate of metal. The way we want to light the tilt skillet, this is an automatic lighting machine, and we're going to light this tilt skillet in a very similar way to other pieces of equipment in our kitchen. We begin by pulling the gas main shutoff valve out to open up the gas in the kitchen. Then we want to be certain that the gas shutoff valve to this piece of equipment is open and follows in the direction of the pipe. Then we want to come to our control system here and we're going to light it. As I said, it's an automatic lighting system, but it's a fairly old system, so it takes a few minutes to begin. And I'm going to begin by turning the power switch on. When we set our temperature, we should set to our desired temperature. For a simmer, we're going to be someplace around the neighborhood of 225 degrees. I can hear right now that this machine is actively trying to light the pilot, and it'll take a fair minute to get lit. When the pilot is lit, I have a little hole that I look inside to be sure that it's lit. When I think that it's lit, I'm going to check and be certain. I still hear the clicking. To check, I'm going to make sure that I put my eye right up to this hole and see a pilot light lit inside there. And I do right now. A blue flame can be seen inside of this hole. Once I have my pilot lit and the machine is operational, I can open the top. I want to be certain that as this machine is heating, I have something inside of the machine to take excess heat. I need to have oil inside here, the product that I'm going to be working with, or perhaps water. The machine is built with a spigot directly next door that I can fill with, I can fill the machine with water. I need something in there to make sure that it, uh, we don't warp the metal on the bottom of the machine and ruin the machine because we overheat it. The spigot turns away like this so that I can move the machine up and down. The reason it's called a tilt skillet is because once we're done with whatever's inside here, if it's liquid, I can tilt the machine up and pour all of the liquid out. This is the same process I use when cleaning the machine. When I'm cleaning the machine, I'm going to scrub this with soap and water as I would a pan, and then I'm going to dump all this water out. I'm going to go ahead and sanitize it in the same process. Before the machine comes completely to its tilting, I'm going to get a bucket to catch any final product or debris. That's why we call this a tilt skillet. When the machine comes back down, it will start heating again unless we have turned the temperature to zero. It's not a fast machine. You have to be sure the tilt skillet is completely back in its resting position before you close the lid. And if this machine is working right now and cooking something, when we close the lid, it's going to develop a lot of steam under this lid, and the steam will gather around the edges and drip out. So we have a built-in venting mechanism here to be sure that we don't lose a lot of our liquid around the edges of our machine. 
As I said, when we're cleaning it, we're going to scrub it out with soap and water when the machine's off, scrub it out nicely as we would of any other pan. We're gonna tilt it up to let all of the foul water go, and then we're gonna, san and we're gonna set it back down and sanitize it as well. That lists our tilt skillet procedures.